Welcome to Gospel Commission. I hope you're blessed in the Lord today. In this video, we're going to look at Romans chapter 9, verse 1 through 6. We're not going to go verse by verse, but what we are going to do is look at some key passages that can help us to understand what Paul is saying in these verses. Uh, we're going to start a series going all the way through Romans 9. And like I said, it's not going to be detail going through every uh, nook and cranny of the chapter. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to find some key passages that can help us to understand what Paul's line of thinking is throughout Romans chapter 9. So that Romans 9 is not a mystery to us, but we have a sure, confident, biblical interpretation of it. Many times Romans 9 is considered to be deterministic or mysterious, but it's not. It's very clear. It's what Paul preaches everywhere, that uh, it's through the gospel, believing in the gospel, both Jew and Gentile can be saved. And that's what he's preaching in, the, in Romans chapter 9. And so we want to just get some keys to interpreting and then leave it to you to go and study those things out. I've written a book on Romans chapter 9. Uh, if you want to buy that book, you can go over to Kindle if you're interested in supporting our ministry. I've got a link down below. If you're not interested in supporting our ministry, but you would like to read the book, we'll have a free copy online over at our uh, blog under the uh, completed book section. Romans chapter 9, verse 1 through 6. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience testifies with me in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and continual anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for my brothers, my kinsmen by race, who are Israelites, to whom belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises, to whom belong the patriarchs, and from whom, according to the flesh, is Christ, who is over all, God forever blessed. Amen. So Paul starts off by talking about his grief over the unbelief of Israel. They had the scriptures, they had the promises of God, and yet, and they were promised Messiah, and yet when Messiah came and the new covenant came, they rejected it. So he goes into verse 6, because there's a problem with this. It is not as though the word of God has failed, for they are not all Israel who are descended from Israel. So he begins to talk about this problem. If God has promised to uh, bring salvation and bring a new covenant to Israel, but Israel rejects it, then what does that make of God's word? So what are some key passages to understanding this? If we flip back to Romans chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, we recognize that Paul didn't just start this conversation in Romans chapter 9, but he started it long before. Starting verse 1, What advantage then does the Jew have? Or what profit is there in circumcision? Much in every way, chiefly because the oracles of God were entrusted to them. This is what we read in verse 1 through 5. What if some did not believe? Would their unbelief nullify the faithfulness of God? God forbid. Let God be true and every man a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and you may prevail in your judging. So if we flip back to Romans chapter 9, verse 6, it says, It is not as though the word of God has failed. God promised Israel a new covenant. When the new covenant came through Jesus Christ, the majority of Israel rejected. So does that ruin God's plan? God says, God forbid. Their unfaithfulness will not nullify the faithfulness of God. And if we flip back over to uh, Romans chapter 2, we can see why this is the case. Verse 26, Therefore, if an uncircumcised man keeps the righteousness of the law, will not his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? Will the uncircumcised one who is righteous by nature, if he fulfills the law, not judge you who by the letter of the law and circumcision violate the law? So here's a righteous people. They're living according to the righteousness of the law. They're not living according to the laws of Moses, but they're living according to the righteousness that is found in that law. And they are walking and it says they are righteous by nature. But how can this be? He goes on, verse 28. He is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is external in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is of the heart, by the spirit, not by the letter. His praise is not from men, but from God. This is the same thing Paul is going to talk about in Romans chapter 8. But here he's letting us know that Christians who have the spirit of God, that walk according to the law of Christ, putting sin to death by the power of the Holy Spirit, they are the ones that are counted as Jews, counted as the true Israel before God. This is why we see in Romans chapter 9, verse 6. It is not as though the word of God has failed. Even though Israel rejected, God is still going to fulfill his promises to Israel. How? For they are not all Israel who are descended from Israel. That is, they are not all part of the people of God just because they are descended and they're from the natural lineage of Jacob. 
So when we look at Romans 9, 1 through 6, and we, we take into account what Paul's already said in Romans chapter 2 and Romans chapter 3, we understand what he's talking about. There's a problem. Israel was promised many things. Now those things have come to pass, but they have rejected them. But God is still faithful. He's still keeping his word. And how is he doing it? Because he's counting those that trust in Jesus Christ, receive the spirit of God as his people, and the promises are fulfilled in them. I hope this has been helpful. We'll go ahead and continue this in the next video on this series, and we'll continue to go through verse 6 through 9. God bless you.